Good morning, everybody. This is Jeremy Williams representing Garden City Ammonia Program, GCAPCoolCast.com, our online training division. Uh, today I'm going to bring you another video cast. Today we'll be focusing on valve, valve groups, valve clusters, and a safe and effective way of being able to do a pump down, pump out of these groups to maybe open the strainer or uh, service the, the group themselves. Uh, making a lot of mistakes across the industry right now, a lot of mechanics trapping liquid between the solenoid and let's say the first isolation valve in a group and unfortunately in Malaysia just a year ago it led to two guys' loss of life uh, working on a valve group feeding liquid ammonia to an ice machine. Uh, but nevertheless uh, let's take a look at a cutaway that we have here at the facility and start looking at this particular cutaway. Uh, it's a very nice display. The valve that is right here on the top right is our first isolation valve. Underneath it's the strainer and after locating the strainer we can find that this is the solenoid so our flow would be moving from right to left. We'd always be going from the strainer basket into the solenoid. Um, and then downstream of this, this port here is most likely the hand expansion valve combination isolation valve. And looking at this group, the solenoid right now is in an automatic function. And what that simply means is, is that whatever is controlling it electrically is what's going to actuate the valve. And when energy is given to this coil creating a magnetic field, the magnetic field itself will blow this plunger upwards <clears throat> or excuse me downwards to create an opening force of this particular valve and when we look at this one you can see that my finger is here moving it which is a unique feature a unique trait to this particular design that is taking place here um, so with the flow being from right to left if my pressure is underneath here and this valve is an auto but there's no electricity on that coil right there. That means that everything from here all the way this direction would be trapped with some liquid refrigerant. And if I wanted to put it in manual or manually open it, that would just simply mean that with the service wrench, we could take this solenoid and as I start jacking this still, we'll eventually see that this piston plunger, because of this solenoid going down, starts to force this. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, starts to force the seat and at this point right now you can start to see that the piston is moving down so if we were to create isolation here we would start here but we've got to manually open this immediately or if we manually open that first then we'd come back and close this isolation so that when we evacuate this entire chamber we don't have that trapped liquid here uh, very very important understanding of this so I'd like to give a couple more insights to this particular understanding um, and to look at this, you know, these solenoids, they're different. Uh, some are in, some are out, and what I'm meaning by that is for manual and auto disposition. Uh, a lot of these guys coming into the field don't really know what manual or auto may mean. And uh, auto just means seamlessly that it's electrically activated, it's on and off, something else is controlling that. Manly means you're overriding automation controls, and you're putting the valve itself in a fully open position. Very important things to consider in just the basic maintenance task of a valve group, pump down, pump out. Uh, but when we look at different brands that are out there, and sometimes the different models within these brands, uh, when we look at this list that is here, these are all solenoid positions for in and out, automatic function and manual function. Uh, and these would all be for what they know as refrigeration specialties, or RS, or what the industry calls today the Parker valve. Uh, you can see that Hansen is a little bit different, and even Danfoss is a little bit different. Um, so never bet your bottom dollar that uh, they're always out for auto, always in for manual, or always in for auto and always out for manual on the opposite of that. So let's take an example here from a cutaway bench that we have built specifically to showcase some of the Parker valves that are out there. This valve, if you can see that, is an S4A solenoid. So if I want to figure out if that valve's in or out for auto, I could use a quick reference chart like this so I don't have to memorize it. Come back over here to the chart. S4A would be in for what position at this point? Automatic, where the valve that we were just working on on this particular display is actually out for automatic. Uh, last thing to show that's pretty nice about this particular fabricated valve group is that when you look on your service cap handles, some neat things that are about this particular design is, again, it could be reversed, and you could use this as your adjustment for closing or opening. But what I really like about it is the potential port for a lockout loop, 
or a lockout chain or rope that could be rammed through there so that when we get this valve in a pump down pump out we can effectively isolate it from lockout tag out perspectives by running a chain through there and around the valve group so last but not least give you a little bit more tips here is that this stuff you're not born with sometimes you got to take the time and the courage to actually read some of the information from the from the manufacturers so I'm going to flip this around, and this is just some paperwork printed off of Parker's website about the SXN solenoid and some various ones. What's pretty neat here is a lot of people don't understand is everything that it says here is that all solenoids can flow backwards, even when an automatic function. For the particular one we looked up, it needs 25 pounds more pressure on the downstream side than the upstream side, and that is going to allow the valve to reverse the flow. And... Um, so when you look at your solenoids, they may only stop flow in one direction, and that's going to be the arrow cast on the body, and they will flow backwards. Uh, nevertheless, uh, these are just some things that we teach in the GCAP Crow, uh, the advanced understanding of industrial refrigeration for a certified ammonia refrigeration operator. Uh, this will be coming out of Chapter 5. There's so much more that we could be getting into, but we'll save that for another video cast and another training session. Um, so some things that we'll be doing today is... Um, We'll be actually giving away these posters. Uh, if you want a free poster like this that you could hang up in your engine room, uh, there's so much that you could use from the saturation tables to the positions of the solenoids to your quick references of conversions of some mathematics. Uh, as long as you're willing to pay for the shipping, we will send these out for free. Uh, first 25 people that call in will get one today. 620 uh, 271 zero zero three seven and uh, we'll mail them out to you and you can get them hung up i really appreciate the opportunity to present this message today this uh video cast has been sponsored by parker uh, which a lot of you know them as refrigeration specialties what a beautiful valve group what a beautiful valve assembly and just thankful to be able to have some of these cutaways and the opportunity that when we get to have people come here they can actually put their hands on it and learn it for themselves until we have a chance to meet again, uh, thank you, Parker. Thank you, GCAPCoolCast.com. And uh, my name is Jeremy Williams. I'll be signing off. And until we see each other again, keep it in the pipes.